Greetings, fellow Earthlings, and welcome to Tales from the Hoop, a podcast dedicated to diving into the weird, wild, and wacky stories from basketball history. I am your host, Ricky Freck, and joining me is my brother, Davey Boy Smith. Okay, my brother has become what well, he's a wrestler, right? Yeah. He's like part of the British Bulldogs, or yes. he is the British Bulldog? Uh, I have no idea. Okay. I know he's in a reference to Bulldogs. Oh. Okay. Wait, what? Like, he is a part of either a faction oh, and okay. or Sorry. Like, he's associated with the nickname. In some I way. thought you had something you were saying that like, you, this is going to tie into something you're going to say later. No. No. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this started. No shenanigans because we're going to have a lot of them later. So, <clears throat> on or, or excuse me, on February 5th, 1983, the television show Different Strokes aired the first part of its two-parter The Bicycle Man, in which Arnold Jackson meets a man named Mr. Horton who owns a bicycle shop. Do you remember this episode? I don't. Do you have you ever watched Different Strokes? Yeah, I used to like it a lot. It's a good show. Uh, you might remember this as we get into it. Over the course of two episodes, Mr. Horton tries to molest Arnold and his friend Dudley, though thankfully he stopped in the end. Uh, do you remember this episode now? I should say I was really young when I, I, I don't think, I think the molestation was going over my head. Probably. There's a part where Dudley, uh, Arnold leaves Dudley there at his bike shop and they come back and Dudley's been drugged. Um. And then, yeah, it's bad. Oh boy. Uh, so this two-part episode would kick off a run of very special episodes in sitcoms, which you probably have seen plenty of those. You know, there's, I mean, Boy Meets World has them. Everybody has yeah. a very special episode. The emotional episodes. Yeah. Dealt with heavier topics that than the lighthearted shows we're used to. Today, we're having our own bizarro version of a very special episode by turning away from the strange side of basketball history to discuss our power rankings. I put heading into the season Technically, as of recording this, we are two days into the season. Now, we're going to do our power rankings for the year. I have not changed my rankings since the season began. So I have not changed my rankings, and I didn't. I haven't seen anything of any team that really would make me feel any differently than the the only team that performed so dramatically better than anyone else can't go any higher. <laughs> that I think for what for where yeah. they're at in my rankings, so I yeah. feel confident about it yeah i i'm very interested i think we'll have the same top two i wonder if we'll have how similar our top fives will be but basically the way this is going to work is dave is going to take the lead for some in some description uh we're going to go with his power rankings and i'm going to chime in based on where i have the teams that he has ranked so like if he has uh the minnesota the memphis sounds ranked in 25th place and i have him ranked in 16th then I'll mention how much higher I am on the Memphis sounds than he is. Have you seen those new jerseys Memphis has this year, by the way? That's your is that your G League team name? The sounds are, I believe, like an ABA team, maybe not even ABA, okay. but it's an old defunct team. And Memphis has their I think it's their city jersey this year, is like okay. red with the sounds. It's Memphis, but the sounds like logo they used to have. Pretty sick. Almost as good uh-huh. as the uh the Pistons secondary jerseys. That look like Oklahoma State jerseys almost. Those are oh, I haven't seen those. Yeah. My favorite city jersey's always been uh the Cream City Milwaukee jersey. You don't like the clit jerseys? Can I say that? <laughs> I might be too early in the podcast. <laughs> that's never been my favorite, no. Okay. A little scary. I, I always wear those in uh 2K. Oh boy. I find, I find it funny. All right. Oh, so man. who do you have uh to start this season ranked as your worst team <clears throat> in basketball? There was the when we very first talked about power rankings, there was one team that came to mind as bottom in the league. I I don't think it's even close. I do think there isn't a lot to say about the bottom like five, six, seven, eight teams. I think there's a lot of people that are still uh tanking in yeah. the or at least not trying very hard to, and maybe gonna see how it goes with some young players, but I'm eventually not, I'm- just gonna tank. Yeah, I have a couple of those that I think are rated higher than most people have them, but I don't think the team you're talking about is going to be one of those. Oh, yeah, this team outright is tanking, and it's the Ben Simmons-led uh, Brooklyn Nets. Okay, so not my bottom team. Interesting. I think they had one good player. I think they traded him away for draft picks. Um, they've got 
I don't know how many, not as many as the Thunder, but nearly as many first Yeah. round draft picks. They are uh, going for the bottom on purpose. I, I don't see any reason to rank them any higher than 30. Okay, so I have the Nets, spoiler alert, ranked at 25. Um, and the reason for the, and I, again, that's not, I mean, it is higher, but real, like realistically, like you said, the bottom eight teams are kind of all bad uh, for Yeah. the most part. Um, but here's the thing. If Ben Simmons is back, he's going to play well, right? And he'll probably get traded if he does play well. Or, I mean, I don't know if they can trade him, but, you know, he'll probably, like if he's back, he's probably not going to be back. Why would he play well? Why? Because he used Yeah. to be really good. It used to be. I mean, It's yeah, been he's been... two years. Okay, Like, two we years haven't is seen not him play... that long. How old is Ben Simmons? I think there's a chance that he's decent at basketball, but Okay, and... I also don't, I, I think it's just as likely that he never plays another good game of basketball again I, in the I NBA. agree. I put in my in my write up, I put even if Simmons is back and playing well, how good is this team realistically? So I'm not saying that even if Ben Simmons Fair is enough. great, he's gonna be they're gonna be good. However, uh Claxton, I think Claxton has DPOI Okay. potential upside. He's Yeah. never gonna win it, right? Because like Wimby is gonna own that award for the next decade, probably, unless Probably. he gets hurt. Uh I think, you know, Cam Thompson, Cam Thomas, excuse me. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm I have their depth chart up, so I'm cheating a little bit. Yeah. But it looks like he was, you know, I mean, my man was putting up like big points last year, right? So they have they have like decent pieces Okay. to build around for the future. And somebody's got to win games in the East. And I don't think I have one, two, three, three other East teams below them. Uh, and, you know, I could see some of them being better. You know, it kind of depends on like who's showing up right for some of them. Yeah. Uh, but I think that I really like Claxton. And I'm a, I'm a big, like, I like defense, right? Uh, I think Cam Thomas is going to be pretty good this year, especially now that he's going to be taking, like, the bulk of their shots. And if Simmons is back to being decent, that's, that's good defense, right? Like, he's a good defender. Say what you want about him as a shooter. He's a good defender. So I think they can, like, keep games close and be a little bit better than some of the other teams. But I do see why you would put them at 30 because they want to be 30. You know what I mean? Like they want to pick, they Yeah. want it. They want to get flag. Uh, but And I do think it's important to know my assumption is we get at max 20 games from Ben Simmons. I, I am assuming that he is yeah, not going to play if at all. So, yeah. And that is something like that. I kind of had to address with myself, not for this team specifically, but like, I hate grading a team based on how I think people are going to get injured. Right. Like, agree. you know, I, I totally agree. But But he's not an injury. It's a a lack of desire to play. yeah, so So. I don't know. I, I think there's some, I, I don't know. There's, there's some other teams that I could like, I am low on one team because I think they're going to get injured. And even if they don't get injured, I don't, I don't really think they're that great, but like some teams I'm like, I'm going to rank them highly, even though they might get injured. So maybe I'm doing that a little bit with Simmons here, No. but I don't know. I, I, again, like Claxton, If he can be, like Thomas Schroeder, we yeah. haven't talked about Schroeder. Come on. If he if Simmons can be eighty percent of the player that he has been previously, I do think they'll win more games than the very last team in the league. Mm But if he isn't, I think they're going to win eleven games. -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's fair. All right. Who do you have again? Like, you know, until we get to, in my opinion, until I get to ranking 24 or 23, even those, even like all the way to 19, I think any of these teams can They're be not really, worthy really of bad. talking about too much. Um, so who do you have at 29? The Washington Wizards. That's my last place team. Okay. Yeah. I think um, they clearly don't want to win. I think they were alb albatrossed by John Wall, albatrossed by Bradley Beal twice in a row. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I think they finally got rid of that. They want to start over in the year 2028. So I don't see any reason why they should be good. is that like based on contracts that long No, I'm just, it, it, that's how long it will take to like, you can't just, like if they get Cooper flag, they can't just be amazing next year. So they've, that's you know, fair they'll build up over a couple of seasons. They got to get the boozer boys too. Cooper flag, Oh boy. the boozers and uh Bilal Koulibaly. That's going to be their starting lineup. And Bilal, like, I forgot about Bilal. I know. How I mean, can you forget I, about? he, he'll be a prominent figure this year, I'm sure. Yeah. Good defender. So, I like him a lot for the future. He yeah. he's high eye on my futures.
My but he could also win them too many games and get traded to <laughs> San Antonio. You never know. Could happen. All right. So, yeah, I don't think there's I, – I put for Washington, I put, I mean, come on. So, not a lot to say about the Wizards. I think they're trash. Um, and they will Easily could them. have the bottom seed over the Nets if yeah. Simmons actually plays. Um, next, I have the Detroit Pistons. Um, I, they still could be the bottom of the league, but mm-hmm. I do feel like – They've been the bottom now for yeah. two, three years. And so, I don't know. There's got to be some kind of regression in there. Like, it's at a certain point, they've got to make some steps forward. All um, right. Oh, go ahead. Keep going. Sorry. I, I like uh, Cade Cunningham a lot. Mm-hmm. I like Jaden Ivey. Um, you know, I don't know, like, do they have winning players outside of those two people? I, I think it's yet to be seen. Um, I'm excited they got a new coach. I think it, it they could be a, a surprising team somewhat, but until they until we see it, I just don't. I can't trust them. I think Detroit is the a play in team this year. Oh wow! I think I Detroit is. I think Cade's going to make a big leap. I think he's going to get an all star first all star team this year. I think him wow. with Jalen Duran is like the perfect complement. Now I will yeah. uh, let me let me say this right. I'm an Oklahoma State fan who lives in Memphis. So like I love those two guys a lot. Yes. I was ready to throw you under the bus there. But... Uh, so like part of it is that, right? But I do like uh, Jaden Ivey quite a bit. Uh, I like Thompson, uh Osser, Asar. How do you say it? Asar, Asar. I I like him, but is he gonna like win you basketball games? I think I think that yes. If I mean okay. if if Ivy's there, if Beasley's if Beasley and Ivy are scoring, you don't need him to score a ton of points. He's like the perfect glue guy. You know, I mean like his is Dennis Rodman going to win you a lot? Of, I'm not. I'm not saying he's Dennis Rodman. Who's like, scoring though? Cade. <sighs> okay. Cade is their number. He's going to be their number one scorer easily. And have 18, 17, 18 points a game. No, he had twenty eight in their first game. And at the at the end of last season, he was averaging like twenty five points a night. So like, okay. Cade's right. got Cade is going to be an all star this year unless he gets injured. He's an all star. I don't think there's any question about that in my mind. Um. I don't think they should win a lot of games. I think they should <laughs> lose, but I think that the East is so bad that the D- Detroit Pistons are going to find a way into the play-in. I have them at 23rd, which is, I don't think that is technically in the play-in, but, okay, but I have near... them at 23rd. I think that they are like, they're one of my high upside teams that I think is ready to not make a big jump, but I think like they're ready to make like a tiny jump, make a move, make the big jump next year or the year after that. I think like- I... I love a lot of their pieces. I mean, obviously, I love Cade. I love Duran. I love Thompson. I think Ivy is really good. I think Tobias Harris was probably not the best choice uh, to be that veteran. However, with Cade driving, and if he's out on the, if he shoots well from three, like if they had Michael Porter Jr., which of course, like they're not going to have Michael Porter Jr., sure. if they had Michael Porter Jr. out there with Cade, it, it would be over. They would be a playoff team easily because like Cade is good at getting to the rim. Cade is good in the pick and roll. Cade can find open shooters. And if they had a guy, a big, a four a guy at the four that could knock those down, I think they'd be cooking. But unfortunately, I don't know if Tobias Harris is that guy. Just um, to challenge your bias, yes, it's Oklahoma State. Yes, it's Memphis. You also have a love for like the '90s big man. Yeah, I think you might be overrating Jalen Duran. I don't think a so. little bit. But I th- we'll I, see. I, I think that I, I think you could be correct in some ways, but I think that he is like, like I highly rate. Uh, the Mavericks, right? Like, I think that the Mavericks have really good big man and not like the stretch big big guy, right? Like uh, Derek Lively, Lively and Gafford. Gafford. Like, I like those guys a lot because if you have, and I, the Mavericks do have this with Luka, if you have a point guard who can create, although I think, is Luka going to play the three this year? Because like, who knows what that, that starting lineup is going to be weird. It um, doesn't matter. He can do I mean, yes, but if, okay. So if you have a creator, and you can have a rim runner alongside him. I think it works pretty well. Um, obviously, I'd like for them to be a shooter in the modern NBA, but I think Duran plays good enough defense. He's a good rim protector. He's a good rebounder. I think he had like 12 rebounds, 13 rebounds in their first game. They almost beat the Pacers in game one. Uh, if not for like a very good Halliburton shot, I believe they would have won that game. So yeah, I'm 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 buying the Pistons this year. Okay. I'm I'd be excited that. to be wrong. I hammer that over. I love young teams and I love when uh, teams aren't tanking anymore. So I would love for them to try and be good. So 
Again, we'll I don't it. think they should. I think like they need Ace Bailey. That's that's my pick for them if they don't do well. I mean, obviously, like Cooper Flag is the pick if you're terrible, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, next, I've got the Jazz at 27. Okay, we're one off. I'm 26 for the Jazz. Okay. I think that they have decent pieces. I like Walker Kessler. I like Cody Williams. Um, yeah. I like Lori Markinen. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if I think Cody Williams is the type of player that can just fit in. I don't think he needs to be your number one guy immediately because uh-huh. you've already got Lori. Um, I like a couple of other, their other pieces. My only issue is just their GM and I have no idea what they're committed to. Yeah. Like that Lori's been in trade talks for two years. Yep. Um, I, I would not be surprised if they made a move there. Um, seems like people are really interested in Walker Kessler. It wouldn't be surprised if they traded him. So I think the team's good. I think they could make a leap, but I also just have no idea what they want to do. And if it's, if you're not going to be a playoff team, I don't see why Danny Ainge wouldn't make trades. So yeah. I think they'll probably lose someone that's uh, key to winning this yeah. year. So, yeah. Yeah, I think that's my exact pr- – I mean, I, I really like Kyle Filipkowski. Um, oh, yeah. I was hoping for, like, one of the teams I follow to get him, um, but it didn't happen. I mean, also I was hoping for Cody Williams to go to the Thunder because that would have been hilarious. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think you have it exactly right. I think that this team – is going to be like pretty competitive through January. And then they're going to be like, we're not going to win a playoff series. So we're just going to start trading off our pieces. And by pretty competitive, I mean like in games, not necessarily winning games. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, So I think they're going to start trading off people before the trade deadline. And I don't think you're going to see a lot of these guys, not a lot, but several of these guys I think are going to move on to uh, more of a contender pretty soon. Is Kyle Philip Filipkowski, is there anything wrong with him other than his girlfriend situation? <laughs> I don't know. Because he fell in the draft. Yeah, a lot, and I never yeah. really understood why. The only, the only thing I ever read was like, his girlfriend won't let him talk to his family. And it's kind of weird. And that is weird. I mean, he might be, maybe he's slow. Like maybe he has not okay. elite athleticism. I don't know for sure. I mean, I liked watching him. He, he's a Duke boy, right? Yeah. Yeah, I liked watching him at Duke. Um, I mean, I liked watching Isaiah, Isaiah Collier play for USC, right? Their point guard sure. they drafted. Yeah, he. Was, I mean, wasn't he? Wasn't that? He, am I misremembering? Isaiah Collier was the guy that was like supposed to be number one for like the first stretch of the year, and then he was just really bad at USC. Oh, um, I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm thinking of a different guy. Um, but yeah, I think. I mean, I think they have some good young pieces, but I definitely will not be surprised when they trade Laurie. And uh, maybe even, I mean, that was the popular thing in 2K was to trade, make your, if you needed some bigs, they were always looking to trade Kessler and uh, Markin in last year. So yep. I yep. think they're looking to do it this year too. Not that 2K imitates reality very often, but yeah. Okay. I think 20, right on them. 26 spot. I've got the Blazers. Okay. Um, I have, yeah. Go ahead. Uh, I have them at 29. So, okay. I also, I wouldn't be surprised if they flipped with the Jazz. I really don't know what they're trying to do. Um, the continuation, they 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 seem to always hold on to players a couple yeah. years too long. Yes. McCollum, Lillard, Jeremy Grant. Like, uh, I, I don't, I, I they've got like young, nice pieces that could take a step and be good. Um, you know, I like certain guys on the team, but I just don't. I also wouldn't be surprised if they decided they weren't good enough and shipped some of those off. So, yeah, yeah. I, I think this team has a lot of good puzzle pieces, but I don't think they really fit together very well. Yeah. Like I like, you know, like I'm looking at their depth chart right now. Love Simons, love Scoot, love Shaden, love Advia. Uh, I think Klingon could be interesting. The guy, uh, the, he was, um, crap. What's that team called that? Oh my God. I can't think the the team that always is good, but they they're like a mid major. Uh, Gonzaga, gosh, okay, yeah, he's Gonzaga, right? Or was he? Oh wait. yeah, I don't. Um, I think he was I Gonzaga. I'm not uh, a, an NCAA expert. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, I'm not either. But uh, I like a lot of their pieces. I just don't really think like I don't know. I don't really trust Dominating. I think Grant took a big step back last year. 
<laughs> I, I mean, I think both those guys get traded. Great. And uh, well, I think they might have to trade off some of their guards because like they have, I too guess many they do have too many. Yeah. They have too many, like, you know, what are you going to, I mean, Scoot has to start this year, right? Like, yeah. And then I think you're probably keeping Scoot and keeping Shaden and getting rid of Simons. Because they yeah. just traded for Advia or Ad Denny. They traded for Denny. Yeah. Uh, so they have to keep him on the roster. Um, but yeah, I think so. I think I think Simons is probably on the way out. And then hopefully, like, they can get a big or something and make it work because I don't know. I don't trust very many. A lot of their guys, I'm like, mm, I don't know yeah. about this. A lot of their, know. it's kind of similar to, well, we'll talk about them later, but it's similar to another team where I like, I love a lot of their players. They just don't work together. Yeah. Um, next up, 25, I've got the Hornets. Oh, okay. And this, maybe I am maybe I just haven't ranked too low. Um, I think this is my Pistons team where I'm like, this. they could really mess around. Like, Yeah. Uh, they've got Mello back. They've got Brandon Miller, who looked like a stud last year. They've got Bridges, who, you know. Good at basketball, unfortunately. Um, <laughs> but I just really think, I mean, Melo was a super duper star before going out. Yeah, I mean, he he won Rookie of the Year over Ant, right? Yes. So. And like, I, I, I don't know if we, I don't want to say forgot how good he was, but it's just like they didn't look good last year at all without him. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they flirted with 40 games. So I, and you have, I you don't have the, think they will, uh -huh. but... At the same time, like if Melo gets hot and starts playing like a all NBA level, I yeah, know. you have them at twenty five. Yeah, I have them at twenty two. Okay, if Mark so uh, Mark Williams is gang, I'm gang, right? Isn't that what Lamelo said? <laughs> yes. Uh, I uh, are we was it Mark Williams he was talking about? No, he was talking about um, Kimball uh, Walker. Kimball Walker. Yeah. Are we allowed to curse on here? I guess it's my podcast. I fuck with this family. Um, no, but I, I love, like, I am a huge Mark Williams fan. Again, like you said, I like the throwback centers, even if they don't work super well. If he's healthy, if he gets back quickly, LaMelo's healthy. I think this team is a playoff team, a play in team at least. Um, and I think that, like, Brandon Miller, we don't talk about enough about how good he was last year. Oh, yeah. As Wimby was so good. But in any other season, Brandon Miller's, oh, well, and Kate, or uh, not Kate, um, What's your guy's name? Chet and Chet. They were yeah. both very good. Um, but any other season? Yeah, he's not a rookie. I, I'm but always he, he bothered by that. Could have won rookie of the year. But I'm always bothered by that whole thing. Like, yeah, it makes fair. no sense. Yeah, but uh, so I think he would have won rookie of the year in like any other season, basically. Yeah. Um, so I think. I mean, I don't know. I think I think Charlotte is headed in the right direction. Um, but we won't we won't speak about the other guy. You, I'll I'll let you just leave you to talk about him. Um, so much you talk about him. Who would have won? Over Cade's rookie year and Brandon Miller's rookie year, who would you have? I have to look at the stats, but I mean, come on. All right, fair Let's enough. be real here. Next, I've got the Raptors. Um, I don't really know what to say about them. I think they're another one of those teams that's like just kind of stuck in the middle. I Scotty Barnes is awesome. Um, I really wish that he would go to a contending team. I think that'd be a lot of fun, but I don't see any reason to trade him. I think that he's the kind of guy that you build your team around, not the kind mm -hmm. of guy that you add. So, um, yeah, I don't see them making a long run unless they add a couple other people. Um, but at the same time, they can't – like, I, they're not bad enough to suck. So, I just don't see it happening. Yeah, I don't I don't really like this roster. I have them at 28. Um, oh, also, I want to, okay. I, I believe, isn't, wasn't Scotty Barnes rookie of the year, the year Cade was rookie. Isn't that true? I don't think rookies so. the same year or am I wrong? I could be wrong. I think uh, Scotty Barnes lost to Cade. No, he won rookie of the year. Oh, I was pissed about it. I was, I kind of like hate Scotty <laughs> okay. Barnes a little bit. I was um, pissed about Josh Giddy not getting that. So, <laughs> but yeah, I just don't like, what is, I mean, what's this team doing? What are we doing? We got RJ Barrett. Come on, get over yourself. Grady Dick. <laughs> Get out of here. Go back to Kansas, baby. Um, I do like Emmanuel quickly. I put in my write-up. I didn't write very much about this team. I just put Jamal Sheed doesn't deserve this because I like Jamal <laughs> Sheed a lot, and I wish he got drafted by a better team. Yeah, uh, yeah. I have them a little lower than you, but not that like not low enough that it matters. Similar to the Blazers, I 
I they've got good talent, so you can't say, oh, I think they're gonna like guaranteed tank. But at the same time, there's not enough there to like like they probably should tank. You know? I think they I think they will be bad. I think they'll be bad. I think they will tank. Like not maybe not on purpose, but like Barnes took a step back last year. He wasn't as good as he was as a rookie. Yeah, I know. So I know. I'm kind of like down on that team in general. I like quickly, but as a sixth man, so maybe Jamal Sheed can start. No, he cannot. He cannot yeah, start. That's probably not this year. No. <laughs> probably, um, probably not ever. Next at 23, I've got the Hawks. Okay. I'm a little higher than you at 21. Okay. I didn't do my research. Uh, I don't know what their plan is. I don't have, other than Trey Young is like really good at offense. Yeah. I I just don't like what's the, what are we going to do past that? It Um, doesn't seem like we ever have a, and I know we've been asking that question for a long time. Yeah. Um, and I just, I don't see a direction. I also think, you know, I don't want to compare the two, but there's a, you know, a, a, if you have a player like Steph Curry, who is so mercur mercurial Mercutio? on the offensive side of the ball, What was that what? word you just said? Mercurial. Mercutio? Mercurial. Okay. M-E-R-C-U-R. Okay. You have Sure. to have a defensive presence like Uh-huh. Draymond. And I just, without it, I like, you just have Trey Young who, you know, shoots 30 times a game and Makes really is, good passes. isn't going to win a bunch of games. So... I, I do think that this team actually, so this is maybe a weird thing to say. I think since they got rid of DeJounte Murray, I think they might actually be a little better Okay. uh, because I think that, uh, I think it will be a playoff team or a play-in team at least. Um, I think that Jalen Johnson is going to take a step forward this year. I like Jalen Johnson quite a bit. And uh, I know like, is it Reese Aker is how you pronounce it? Rice Aker, their rookie. I don't even know. The number one, overall pick in the draft. You don't know how to say his name. I mean, I guess No. I don't know how to say it either. Um, No. That's but, uh, what I'm like. I what he wasn't. Again, I'm not a draft expert by any means, but like he wasn't supposed to be a number one pick on anyone's board. I think he It's just was, I thought he was supposed to be. I thought it was uh Sar was everyone's. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Sorry. You're correct. Yes. Okay. But they couldn't And pick then him because I have Clint Capella. <laughs> I guess. I don't know. Again, it, they're in that range for me where things could go right and it could look Yeah. better than, you know. Trey I mean that Young yeah. has been to an Eastern Conference Finals before, so <laughs> That's that's an incredible stat. Didn't know that. That's I mean I never would have believed that in a million years. Um but yeah, I have them as a fringe playoff team at best is what I wrote down. But I think they are at least play in capable. Let's do Okay. one more and then we'll take a break. Actually, what was that? 23? Uh, that was 23. Okay, yeah, let's try to do two more quickly and then we'll take a break for ads. Okay, um, your next is your favorite team. I've got the Chicago Bulls at 22. Oh, God, I thought you were going to say it. I was like, I don't know who you're going to say. At 22? <laughs> Are you serious? where do you have them? Where do you have 27. them? Oh, whoa, come on. This team So, is such trash. And they're going to trade Levine in like a matter of weeks. I don't think they'll trade him. Oh, my God. Come on. I th I think they'll come out a little hot. I think Giddy does a lot of basketball things that Bro, make he's going to put up a, absurd numbers this year. they make the team come together. He's he's going to find a lot of open Levine, and they're going to look too good. I think the Vucevic Giddy pick and roll is going to look good. I think they're going to look too good, and they absolutely should blow it. Like there's no reason to keep Zach Levine or Vucevic, but they are going to do the Bulls thing where they. talk themselves into it. They're they're probably going to be like four and five to start the season. Like, oh, well, you know, we've got a couple bounces. We could have won those games and we got to keep it together. And I, they're just, they, they always do this. They are just barely like not good enough. No, I think they're, I'm, I, I hope for their sake, they're terrible and I hope they blow it up. Um, I just, I want to watch them on league pass, watch Matas play. That's all I'm here for. I think this team is trash. I think they're going to be really bad. I think Levine is going somewhere soon. Hope, please. I think like, I would who's going love to see it. 
Who's their Who's their clutch shooter now that Demar's gone? Like they don't have anybody to finish a game. It's Levine. Levine is not a clutch shooter. He's terrible. Dunn took a step last year. Kobe did I, take a step up. Kobe White took a step up last year. I'll give him that. I think. I think they're good. again for their against you their say? own good. Who did you say Dunn? Dunn? I don't think he, he plays there anymore. Does he? Shoot. Who am I thinking of? I'm thinking of Kobe White, probably. Yeah, Kobe White did take a step up. He almost won. He probably should have edit, won. Edit that out. Most improved. I won't. Um. Yeah, Kristen. Never mind. Um. I again. I. It, I think it could go either way, but I think they'll do the same thing they always do, which is win too many games to tank and talk themselves into another, you know. 39 win season. No way. They don't the drum god is gone. They don't have the magic on their side. <laughs> They'll no longer work themselves into a shoot and they're getting out of this finally. I don't think so. Please, for the love of all my Chicago fans, in this. Um, I think we should break because my next one I think might get spicy. So okay. So let's go ahead and break for ads. We will see you here in a second. All right, we're back from our ads. We've learned how to say how's the word say said? Mere mercurial. Yeah, and uh, Dave has a controversial take here at number 21. Let's it, get into it. The more I think about it, maybe I, I hope people agree. I'm pretty confident in where this team will sit. I just think as far as their expectations go, mm -hmm. this isn't where they should be. So at 21, I have the Clippers. Ah, I have the Clippers at 24. Okay, well, there you go. So <laughs> maybe maybe not that hot. But um, you know, they're supposed to be competing for a title. With Kawhi Leonard and James Harden, two uh, MVP level players at one point in their careers. Yeah. Sure. Um, so it's just, you know, I I, I don't see it happening. Um, the, you, earlier you said you don't want to like uh, <laughs> go off of someone's injuries, but it's Kawhi yes. Leonard. And it's the only player worse than Ben Simmons about actually playing <laughs> the basketball. So yeah, I just, I don't trust him. Um, I, I really do. I love watching him play. I've always mm. liked Kawhi. I think he's oh, yeah, actually sure. pretty funny. Um, Kawhi is very funny. He's, he's just so funny. <laughs> like I want them to be good so bad. Yeah. I also think James Harden is funny. I think he catches a lot of flack for, I mean, some of it's deserved for sure. But oh, for sure. Yeah. I think it's so funny that he's just like Daryl Moore is a liar. <laughs> I'll never play for him again. Like after that guy did everything for you. Yeah. Um, I've always been a Harden fan, but I just can't see this team like with if if Kawhi doesn't play 70 plus games, which he can't, like is or is unwilling to, I'm not sure. Yeah. I just can't see it happening. I I'm gonna say something that might actually be controversial. Maybe. Uh -oh. I don't know. Uh even if Kawhi and Harden are healthy. And they both make it into the playoffs. I think Harden is washed. And I think that this team, even if they make it in the playoffs, are not going to make any noise. I don't I think they maybe not swept, but like I don't see them matching up well with pretty much anybody in the West that's going to make the playoffs. So I have them way down the list and think that they're going to be not bad. Like you said, I think they'll like be competitive. I mean, they were they took the Suns to overtime last night, so they're going to be competitive. Uh Harden, you know, Harden missed the game winner. So, you know, there you go. Um, so who knows about that? But yeah, so I just, I think that Harden is, uh, Harden's time has passed. He's, um, he's got, he's, you know, put him out to pasture. Not really. Don't actually kill him, please. Um, but I don't, I just don't think this team has enough like gas in the tank anymore um, to make a run. I mean, if like, yeah. if they had another, if they had another guy, right? Like they had one young guy that I really believed in, like who's their third best player? Zubak? Is Zubak gonna like dominate the playoffs? I don't think so. Uh, man. Yeah, I I, I don't trust. Chris Dunn's there, so maybe Chris, your yeah, your boy Chris Dunn yeah. can do it. Shit. <laughs> but yeah, I just <laughs> I don't. Right. I, it's tough for me to see this team making you know any deep run in the playoffs. Okay. I I like what you said about even if they got made the playoffs, like who are they gonna beat? Yeah, because my next team, I think, will be in the play-in and will maybe surprisingly beat a couple, maybe just one round. But I don't okay. think they'll make it very far. But I have the Spurs at twenty. And wow, we are we are locked in Spurs twenty. Me too. Yeah, and I kind of love it. I think they're. I think Chris Paul is a huge floor raiser. Um, I think it's very similar to what happened with Chris Paul in Oklahoma City. Yeah, where you've you've got 
all you need is a floor general to be able to get the most out of people and hopefully, you know, uh, be a good mentor. And I would not be surprised if he was a great mentor again. Mm -hmm. uh, he helped Wimby and co take another step forward. Yes. And yeah, I, I think he'll probably be defensive player of the year. Yes. Um, Chris, Chris Paul, you think so? <laughs> yeah, Chris Paul. No, probably not. But I am so excited to watch this verse this year. I, 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 think I, I think there is a very like realistic world where Wimby ends the season as a top five player in the NBA. Okay. I think like he is that good. I think he is incredibly good. And I think he's only going to get better with Chris Paul. Now that he has a, like an actual point guard playing with him. And on top of that, now they can let Sohan go be a demon on defense and he doesn't yes. have to like handle the ball at all, which is huge. <laughs> I think Very excited about that. I think Castle looks pretty good so far. Um, I like like Keldon Johnson as a scorer, like a, a tertiary scorer for them. Um, I I think this team is gonna. I think I I think that like in a perfect world, uh, Wimby would get hurt and they would draft Cooper Flag and then we you know they'd have a die. Like if you if you're a Spurs fan, right? In a perfect yeah, world, yeah. that happen. But I think like more realistically, this team is a play-in team and challenging for an actual spot in the real playoffs. And then next year. Hopefully Castle takes another continues to improve or they get a really good point guard in the draft or, you know, they start bringing in actual players because I just think, yeah, I think like, I think Wimby, I think <laughs> as long as you have Wimby for probably like year three on your championship window is open, uh, assuming mm. it doesn't get hurt. Yeah. It's like, I think it's going to, I think he's going to be, I don't know if he's going to be as good as LeBron, but I think it's going to be similar where like, if you have Wimby on your team, you have a shot. Yes, you probably making it to the playoffs. Yeah. So, yeah. um, yeah, I absolutely. Think, I think Wimby is going to be on a tear this year and going to be very, very good. Yeah, I'm I think more excited. realistically, he's a top ten player, but I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility that he like passes up, like a I don't know, like a Jason Tatum for that five spot or something, or Oof. like or like Giannis takes another step back or something. Yeah. I'm, it's possible. Anything is possible. With I think the top three are locked in. I think the top three players are not going to change, but you still have Luca, Shea, and Jokic. Not in that order, but yes. Okay. Fair enough. I yeah, I, th I think I agree with that. But Wimby, I, it, nothing would surprise me. Oh, he the, he I coming. Mean, he coming fast. I'm so terrified as a Thunder fan, but also <laughs> so excited to you know have playoff series against them. That'd be fun. Um, next up, I think these two could easily flip flop in the Western Conference. Warriors. Okay. I have. And I think, again, they are, they could be, you know, spiffy around playoff time. Spiffy, but he says. It also could not work out. Um, the Kaminga thing seems really weird. They okay. Call him by his real name, please. Jonathan. You don't know his nickname? No. Sorry. Oh, come on. You don't know about the cum bucket? Oh my gosh, I would never use that a day in my life. Um, <laughs> I think it's weird that they can't get that figured out. Um, I think they they probably should have done more to trade him for Lori Markkinen. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe that gets revisited, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, until Wiggins returns to all NBA level play, which doesn't seem like it's going to happen. Probably I not, don't, no. I don't see them making a deep run. Yeah, um, but I have them. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. When you've got Steph Curry, you're you, always you a deserve a top twenty shot yeah. or a top twenty ranking. Um, I you know I I have them at eighteen, so one spot higher than you. Um, but I do feel like we're in the point where like, is Curry going to leave? When are they going to start the rebuild? Like, I feel like this team is kind of like treading water until they don't have a, and this is really hard for me to say, a top ten player all time on their team. Um, but what? You don't, what, what I did you say? It's hard for me to call Steph Curry a top 10 player all time. Oh, but you are calling him a top 10 player. Yes. Okay. Thank you. I think, I mean, I don't know. That'll Maybe be a different, that's I might a different. Have to, I might have to talk myself out of it. Um, that's a different day. But yeah, I mean, I, I really like slow-mo. I think everyone likes slow-mo. He's a, he, what a fun guy. Uh, <laughs> hopefully he plays well. Um, but you know, I just, it, I, I want to under, underrate as much as possible any team that includes Draymond Green because uh, I think he's a trash both as a player and as a person um, as a person clearly Come on. <laughs> but like you know I like a lot of their guys like I like 
Gary Payton Jr. or the second, excuse me. I like Lindy Waters, of course. Mo- um, Moses Moody. Mo- Mo- Moody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's good too. Uh, Pods is fun. Um, but I do want to ask a question. I have a trivia question for you that uh, came up earlier today for me. And it, so it, I'm, I'm kind of giving away one of the answers by asking it here. But there have been four Canadian-born players to make an NBA All-Star team since 2002. And none none made it before that. Can you name all four of them? Canadian born players to make an, make all-star, an all-star team. team. Yeah. Shea Gilgis. Correct. A- uh, Wiggins. Correct. Almost said Aaron. I don't know why. <laughs> um, I got to be honest. The, you're not getting number three is pretty sad. So Steve far. Nash. There we go. Thank you. Is the other one kind of out there? Yeah, the other one you won't. You probably won't get. What year did he make it? You know, two thousand four. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. No. The the winner of the dunk contest that year, Fred Jones. The winner okay. of the three point contest that year, Vashawn Leonard. <laughs> uh, this guy played for the Hornets. He played for the Bucks. Oh, it's not Fred. Jo- sorry, I thought you were saying it was Fred Jones. No, not Fred Jones. Sorry. Okay. Uh, Canadian... He played. He played for the Raptors. He actually is an assistant coach currently for the Toronto Raptors. Nope. That's right. It's Jamal McGlore. One <laughs> all-star appearance all time. Okay. Second ever Canadian to make the all-star team. Yeah. Sorry right. about Steve Nash. I sh- that shouldn't have been third. My bad. Yeah, it should have been instantaneous. All right. Who's your 18th team? 18. I've got the Heat. Oh, man. We just flip-flopped Heat and Warriors. And I would love for them to be higher. I think they've got the talent to be higher. I think mm. uh, it's really weird that they don't want to extend Butler. I don't know what's going on there. How I mean, old is he? It doesn't matter. I mean, but he's been injured, right? Like maybe they want to see him. I can see yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, if I, I were him, I would be I would be like offended by that. But I mean, Pat Riley's always been you know a little hard on people, so it's not yeah. surprising or anything. I don't. Yeah. But it's just like. You've got players that can win, players that can make it to the finals. Yeah. I would pay them. Um, Fair, yeah. But, you know, they haven't made it to the finals in two years, right? A lot of teams haven't made it to the finals in more than two years. So (laughs) it's it's a really good point. Um, They didn't look as dominant last year as they have in years previous. But he was out in the playoffs, right? Yeah, he did. He was like, wasn't he halftime or something? Like he was kind of trying to play through it. Am I crazy? I don't. I, I watched that starting five documentary on Netflix, and I feel like he didn't play at all from that. Okay, but they, you know, they obviously they lost sure early. The full story, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So um, again, I think they could. It, it, anytime you have a guy like Jimmy Butler or Steph, yeah, and even Bam in that category, like really? um, you can win mm. lots of games. So. I don't really like Bam. Really? I kind of find Bam to be a little overrated. I don't know. But here's the thing. I love Khalil Ware. I think Khalil Ware is going to be another... Cal L? Cal L is how you say it? Uh, I just always... Whenever I saw it on like draft rankings, I just thought like his nickname's got to be Superman or something. Oh, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm saying it incorrectly. I have no idea. I've never heard it been pronounced. I've just seen him play. Uh or I probably I've have heard it pronounced play. since I've seen him play, but I just don't remember how it was pronounced, right? Um, yeah. So apologies if I mispronounced his name, but I think he's going to be a lot of fun in the NBA. I think if Jaime, that's how you pronounce it, right? Jaime Jaime yep. I think if he keeps developing, that's going to be big. Um, like, I don't really love, like, Tyler Hero, right? Like, I think he's, yeah. he's a good player, but I don't, like, love him. Um, Duncan you know, they Robinson. Got their, they got Scary Terry still there, I think. Terry Rozier. Um, so, they, I mean, they have some pieces, but yeah, I think, like, I think like the best case scenario for Miami is to get the five or six seed and then go on a run and like keep uh, Jimmy buckets like healthy during the season. Yeah. And like, you know, they came from eight, right? Like a couple of years ago when they made it to the finals. So that's definitely like in their wheelhouse. Um, but yeah, I'm not like big on them as a regular season team, but I think they, they could always make a run. Anytime you have Jimmy buckets on your team, you can make a run. Yeah. When you put it on paper, I really like the team. I like a lot of the names. Um, And I think they should be really good, but we just didn't see it last year. So it's hard to say that they they will, I guess. 
Um, next, <laughs> a team that I honestly thought would be atrocious last year. Oh. And so I kind of, they, they, they overperformed my expectation Uh quite huh. a lot. And so I'm sure a lot of their fans would say they're going to take another step forward and they're going to be even better this year. I just feel like they're probably, I, I think they overachieved. I think that they'll probably be in line with that this year. And I have Huh. the rock, the rockets. Okay. So I have the rockets at 15, not too far off. Yeah. I, I think, you know, Uh, I like a lot of the talent. Uh, Yeah, you're a big Dylan Brooks fan is what I heard. I don't see how they fit together. No, I, li I like Jabari a lot. I like Shangoon. Um, Shane I like, Goat, thank you very much. <laughs> I like Jalen. I thought it was so weird and random that they signed <laughs> Dylan Brooks and Fred Van Fleet. Um, yeah. and then went out and got Ime Odoka. Obviously it paid off cause they, Yeah. you know, were a lot better than they were the year before, but I also just don't see how their ceiling raises a lot unless Mm-hmm. those people just take huge leaps. Um, and I, I don't see how that would happen. Um, I also like, am kind of putting email Doka on fraud alert a little bit after Joe Mazzula, the weirdest person in the world took his job and, you know, won a championship. Yeah. Well, Um, yeah, not wrong. I mean, there's a lot of talent on that team, so sure. But I'm just saying like, yeah. I mean, did, did he have Pingus when he was the coach there? He didn't have Pingus, Yeah. That's to be that. fair. He, he, that's the locking piece. I have Houston at 15. Uh, I agree with your assessment that this is a team that has like a ton of really good pieces, but they don't really like, I mean, they, they kind of have to play a little bit like the Kings in some respect, because they have, a center who is also like a playmaker, right? Yeah. Like Shingo plays a lot like Sabonis, not exactly, but they're pretty similar. But then like Shingo, Green, Thompson, Eason, Jabari Smith, the oldest of those five, 23 years old. So like those guys could definitely take a step forward. Um, also Reed Shepard looked really good in summer league. Like, I think this team could take a step forward, but like the best case scenario for them is probably to take two of those guys and then trade them for like a real, real all-star point guard, which is probably not going to happen. But Yeah. Yeah. they just have like so many people that don't really fit together perfectly that, you know, they almost need to make a trade to like blow it up a little bit to make it better. Not even blow it up, but just like change things just enough, like a little tweak. You know, I think they could fix Yeah. the puzzle piece and be like a breakout team, but even more than last year, like a real breakout. But yeah, I think they're Yeah, like if a... they could package Van Vliet and other pieces for like a Trey Young, I would be so much more excited about it. Yeah. But Yeah, I just for don't sure. think, unless Jalen becomes, you know, a 30 point per game scorer, I don't Mm see, -hmm. which maybe he'd probably tell you if he shot, if he got more shots, then he'd be able to do it. But I mean, that's true about most NBA players. If they got more shots, they'd be able to do it. it's fair. Um, but yeah. I I don't love the Rockets. I don't hate them. So Yeah, they're they're a middle of the pack team for me, yeah. for sure. Uh next up, I have dramatically changed my feeling. I didn't change them on the rankings, but I dramatically changed my feeling after watching LeBron James Sr. and Junior play together. Uh-huh. Okay. I have the Lakers as 16. Okay. But I also feel like number one in my heart, you know, it was Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. it was a uh a beautiful performance to Also, LeBron's uh, Instagram post about their family was just Mm. chef's kiss. So, Yeah. I have the Lakers a little higher. I have a 14. okay, okay. Um, I think like... I put in this, I try to never bet against LeBron and AD, uh, but it's hard to see this team winning a title as much as I would love it. Of course, like I'm a big JJ Red. I shouldn't say, of course, I am a big JJ Reddick fan as a coach. I think he's going to be a very good coach. Um, I really like Dalton Connect. I think like that guy could be a big piece for them. I hope Austin Reeves like actually takes that next step. Um, but if LeBron and AD are healthy, like that team could beat most teams, right? Like, Yeah, they have the talent. I don't think it's going to happen, but you know, I'm kind of like hedging my bets here, putting them a little bit above the midway of the rankings. Just like, you know, if they get into the playoffs and they're healthy, they have more than a puncher's chance. Like I would say them and the heat are like those two kind of teams that like, if you get to the playoffs against them, you don't want to play that game. You yeah. don't want to go up against either of those teams. Yeah, and because the rookie class is so weird and the Lakers have... the possibility of winning a lot of games. Mm-hmm.
I, I think West Side Connect is a little bit of a dark horse uh, rookie of the year candidate. Is that, oh, yes. Okay. Yeah. Could be. Yeah. yeah. I think, I mean, yeah, this, I mean, this class is weird. Um, I was trying to think who, who I had as the rookie of the year, but I can't remember who I was thinking it was. I'll, I've got my picks for later. Okay. We'll go through your picks later. I don't remember mine. Yeah. Maybe it'll spark my memory. Um, next up, I've got a very mercurial superstar. Oh, here At, we go. at 15, I've got the Pelicans. Oh, okay. I thought of, I thought it was gonna be something different. Um, Zion Williamson, you know, I think is worth probably 10 spots in the rankings. And so if he's there, I think they're probably closer to 10. If he's not, I think they're probably closer to 20. Yeah. Um, I don't have, you know, I think... Ingram seems unhappy and possibly traded, but if Yeah. they keep Ingram and McCollum and uh, Zion all together and everyone's happy, then And Murray. Don't forget DeJounte. Is so, he any good? oh yeah, Murray, bad, my bad. Um, I think it could be good. I think it could be a good year. I think it. I think probably what has happened is what will happen, and that Zion will come out. He will look great. They'll win like 10 games in a row. Everyone Uh-huh. will be talking playoffs. He'll just like not play anymore or get hurt or something. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Yeah, I, I have the Pelicans at 17 and I I really like this roster from like an entertainment standpoint. But as like a, a championship contender, I have to put them lower because who's playing center for this team? Is it Daniel Theus? Is it their rookie, Miss Missy? Yves Missy? The guy from Baylor? Like who who's going up against Chet Holmgren? Who is going up against uh Chris Dops? I mean, Who is going up against Wimby? Jaron Jackson, Shingo, yeah, like who's guarding their the other team's five? If is it going to be Zion? Is Zion that playing the five that was for going this to be team? my argument is like Zion against Chet. I like Zion to bully Really? Chet I mean, a little bit. but does he even like play defense? DeJounte Murray does not play defense. <laughs> yeah. CJ McCollum does not play defense. Brandon Ingram doesn't play defense. Herb They've Jones got. plays defense. They've got Herb Jones listed as the starting power forward and Zion as the starting center. Okay. Well, I mean, if that's what we're doing, sure. But I just, I don't know. I don't, I don't see them as like a big time championship Yeah. contender. I, I mean, they make, I think they'll make the playoffs again. Another team that's like a, a heavy league pass team. Definitely want to watch them as much as possible. They'll be a lot of fun, but I just don't like, like their chance. I don't like their chances to win a title as the roster is currently constructed. Yeah. Uh, they've always got the Jose Alvarado uh, trick play for that's good for a Oh couple yeah. points a game. Yeah, for sure. So. Yeah. Okay, next up I got the Kings. Oh my God. Wow. What, what position is this? 14. Okay. That's not as far as far as it's not as far off as I thought. Okay. Kings What at do you 14. have them? I've got 11. I think they're the most 14 team <laughs> of all time. Um, yeah. you know, I, I think that they're a lot of fun to watch. I think Yeah. on the right night they can beat anybody. but I just don't think they can sustain beating most teams that are going to be in the playoffs over a seven game series. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think they're the definition of a 14. I mean, they kind of have that same problem we just talked about with the Pelicans, right? Like who's playing like they don't have great defense. So like, Yeah. yeah, they can outscore anybody or most teams. I don't think they probably can't outscore the Celtics, but um, they can outscore most teams. But then like when it gets to the playoffs, you have to actually start playing defense. Who's going to be that guy? I don't know if they have. I mean, look, I like Alex Lynn more than anyone in the world, except for probably his mother. But uh, I don't know if he's going to, I don't know if that's, that's your. your road to the finals. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I have them at 11. I think they're definitely a playoff team. I, I mean, they, they got like one of the most clutch players last year on their team now with DeRozan. So that's, you know, that's something for sure, Yeah. but Yeah. I don't, I don't love DeRozan as much as other people do. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, th I think they're going I to think be, they could surprise. I think they're going to be good. I just don't, I get, I agree with you. I don't know like how deep of a run can they actually make? I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Next, I've got the Magic at 13. Oh, okay. Ooh, okay. We're starting to diverge a little bit. Uh, I I think we were offline when we are, were argue, already arguing about this team a little bit. Uh huh. Um, I, you know, I, Paolo is a stud, obviously. Mm hmm Wagner's a stud, obviously. Uh, they just made Suggs like an incredibly highly paid, what I thought was a crazy overpay. 
uh, defensive I think everything, stopper. everything in the NBA is an overpay That's at this fair. point. Yeah. Uh, you can't say it anymore. Um, <laughs> every, every contract would be an overpay, basically. Um, but yeah, I just, I don't see what they did to add to, like, get any better than last year. Now, if you say, well, Paolo is going to go from a top 15 player to a top seven player, great, but mm -hmm. I don't see it happening. So I, yeah, I, I like them a lot. I think they're a lot of fun to watch, but I don't think they should be in the top 10 Ooh, discuss okay. teams. Interesting. I have them at number nine. Okay. Um, and the reason for this is not just because of KCP, right? I think KCP is going to make their offense a little bit better uh, than it was last year, which is already very good. I think Paolo and Franz are continue gonna, going to continue to get better. Um, I'm a little bit, very slightly banking on Jonathan Isaac playing a little bit more than he has in the past because he's not played a ton. Um, I don't really like him as a person, but he's a very good defender, which would help them out massively. And here's a stat for you. Uh, last year in their matchup against the Cavs, they outscored the Cavs over the series by 31 points and still lost the series. So I don't think that's happening again. I think okay. this team is probably at least a second round team, if not better than that. But yeah, I, I mean, depending on who they match up with, but I am, I'm bullish on the magic this year. Okay. I would have them. Yeah. Maybe right in that second round, I think. Like just outside the, I don't know. I will say technically I have four East teams ranked ahead of them, but that's what yeah. I just, I was going down there my sixth. So, which, and honestly my, so my next team is also an Eastern conference team. Uh -huh. It's one you just talked about. I don't, I, I went back and forth all day about which one should be 12 or yeah, which one's 12, which one's 13. So I have the okay. Cavs at 12. Okay. Ooh. Um, I feel the this exact biggest same way about the, really. Yes. Are you up or down? I'm up. Okay. Let me finish yeah, tell, my point. Tell me your, there. yeah, say, say what you got to say. I feel the exact same way about the Cavs as I do the Magic. Like, I just don't see what they did to add. Mm -hmm. And I don't, you know, I, I love Mobley. I, I think he's a lot of fun to watch play. I think he needed to take a step last year in order for them to go deep. Mm -hmm. Um. I think Mitchell is the type of guy that needs to have somebody better in order mm. to like win a championship on okay. his team. Um, wow. How dare you? I, I like him a lot. He not, not enough. The, apparently. He whooped the Thunder's ass um, <laughs> a long time ago. So I remember that. So, but again, uh, he hasn't done much other than whoop the Thunder's ass in the playoffs. So I just don't, yeah. I, again, I, I think they'll make the playoffs. I think they'll potentially get to a second round. I don't like them as a top 10 team. I have the Cleveland Cavaliers. And to be fair, I do say I may be too high on them, but I put them at sixth. Okay. I have the Cavs in the top I six. To I think that Mobley is going to take the leap this year. He's going to be an all-star level talent. Uh, I will I will concede. Here's what I'll call, concede about the Cavs is that the issue with the Cavs is they have to give minutes to Mobley and to Allen, to Jarrett mm -hmm. Allen. Yep. And I don't think they work super well together most of the time. I would love if they could trade off Jared Allen. I don't think that's going to happen. But I think that if Mobley takes that step, they were a second round team last year. Now, I did just point out they lost by 31 points across the series. But I think that if Mobley takes that next step, then another leap, he's an all-star player, becomes like a top 20 guy, like a number two or three power forward. I mean, he has, much like Nick Claxton, I think Mobley has defensive player of the year upside. Yep, absolutely. He'll, he'll probably never win it because of winning. In a non-Wimby league. <laughs> but still, like I think he's going to be a very, very good player. The issue with him is I don't think he's ever going to be like a great scorer. Yeah. Uh, so this team, I might, you know, maybe I could see them falling back a little bit and it would be fair. Um, but there's just some teams that like other people are probably high on that I don't really like this year, which we'll get to later. So they kind of like, it was more like the Cavs kept creeping up than that. Okay. I love them at six. Sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, I could, I could, you could easily flip them with the magic and I wouldn't be mad about it. Like they could flip down to nine. Well, actually, I would be mad about it because I think that no, I don't know. We'll talk about it. I don't know. Yeah, okay. I have them. I'm I may be a little high on them because I like Evan Mobley, and uh, I like Mitchell a lot more than you apparently. I like Mitchell. There's nothing wrong not enough, with that. Not enough. Not enough. I I just haven't seen him go all the way. You know. Okay. Well, you know. So there's a lot of guys you have ranked above him, you haven't seen go all the way either. So. 
Is there? Yeah. Well, I mean, I can I think of at least we'll... one that I have much lower than them that you haven't talked about yet. Oh, I can't wait. Okay. Uh, next, I've got the Suns. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Where do you have them? What, what number are we on? 11. Oh, I, no, I wasn't. Oh, my God. That. It's the, some of the teams you haven't talked about yet. Um, okay. So I, I have the Suns at 12. I think every team I talked about is has been in the playoffs. Like as or like, but anyways, we'll get there. I guess we'll, we'll find the one that you're mad about. Not mad. The, the Suns. I've got at eleven. Um, yeah. I. <laughs> it's crazy that I. I think their ceiling is so high because oh, really? of the offense that the, yeah, absolutely. To have Kevin Durant, Devin Booker, and Bradley Beal. Mm. Okay. Absolutely. I, I think your your scoring potential is out of control every given night. Um, but that also leaves, you know, a lot to be desired on the other yeah. end of the, the it, basically every other position they have and on the defensive end. Um, so but yeah, but your anchor is Nurkic. So like, what are we doing? Who sure, are they defending? Sure. Anyways. Uh, what yeah. Do you mean anyways, that's like, that's like the worst part about their team is their defense is trash. That's what, sorry, that's what I'm saying. Like, oh, okay. I mean, the, I mean, I have them at 12, so it's not like we're you know that far off on this team. They've got a very high offensive ceiling, but on yeah. the other side of the coin is their defense, which is. But just, have you seen Grayson Allen? My man is yoked this season, baby. Oh, is he? I haven't seen him. No, he got, he got caked he up, got ripped. Yeah, good for him. <laughs> um, I don't. So see he can it. he can do some more flagrant fouls, even flagranter, more flagrantly. You know, I went to a, a Oklahoma City G League game. Uh-huh. Where I saw Grayson Allen a couple of years ago, and he really wasn't impressing there. So, yeah, I know he's gotten better, but sheesh, I don't, uh-huh. I don't love him as a starter. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I I have said for a few years now that I think the only way for Kevin Durant to truly like bring about or bring around his legacy in a meaningful way is to go back to the Thunder. Ooh, that would be and win a championship, LeBron style. Yeah. Never happening. I think the trade could happen this year. For who? Who are they trading to get Kevin Durant at I 36 think, years old? I think they're going to trade. Well, you might not be able to trade Beal, but I think that like they've spent all this money on, you know, maybe it happens after this year, but if mm-hmm. they don't go far, like one, Kevin Durant's going to say he wants out because, you know, if they can't, win then he just yeah. decides he, he needs to be traded today um and two they've got that new owner who's like what am i spending all this money i'm literally the highest salary in the league for what yeah well i mean you signed bradley beal and kevin durant what did you expect <laughs> two-time champion kevin durant yeah with like the best teams ever constructed <laughs> it's not because of kevin that's, i mean it is it fair. is because of kevin durant but it's not because of kevin durant like they that's also fair. won two titles without him so I don't, I mean, you know, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, I, Kevin Durant, spoiler alert, not in my top 10 players of all time. Not like Steph Curry. Um, but yeah, I mean, I do think like Tyus Jones is a good pickup for them at point guard. Like, yeah. And I'm pretty sure they got him pretty cheap too. Like somewhat surprisingly. I mean, they have to get everyone cheap. Well, I bet he wants it. to play for a contender and oh, okay. for a contender. I don't think that is as true as he thinks it is, but you know, like Bradley Beal has pointed out several times. He was hurt a lot last year. And they were still good. So with him, they'll be really good. I don't know if I really believe that so much, but we'll see. I don't know. I, I just think when you have like so many mouths to feed uh, and a lot of them are not like the Celtics work because, and we'll get to them. I'm sure uh, not that soon, but at some point um, like they work. Cause I feel like a lot of their stars are okay with not taking a ton of shots. I feel like Bradley Beal, Devin Booker and Kevin Durant all want a lot of shots. Hmm. Like they all want to take yeah. as many shots as possible. Yeah. It's a problem. Yes. Um, and Nurkic is a huge problem. Mason Plumley is their, is their backup center. I don't love Let it. Let me repeat that for you. Mason Plumley or Bol Bol maybe. Twitter's favorite, Bol Bol. Yeah. That's my favorite thing about the Suns is when Bol Bol scores like one point and Suns Twitter freaks out. He's like the second coming of Jesus Christ. <laughs> it's Bol Bol. Come on. Uh, my next two are the only ones that I think you could even kind of argue. So I, I think we'll get what to you, the ones. What do you mean by that- argue? You said that you there's teams you're waiting for because you've had them way earlier oh, okay. in the rankings. One, already. there's one, there's one team I'm waiting for. Is it the Grizzlies? It is the Grizzlies. Okay, I've got the Grizzlies at ten. 
Oh, we're at 10? Yeah. That was 11? Okay. I have the Grizzlies at 16. Okay. So, obviously, based on last year, I think the Grizzlies should be at 16 or lower. Yeah. Um, But not only do they get a returning John Morant, they get the eventual rookie of the year. Oh, my God. Zach Eady. Okay. And you want to talk about a pick and roll between Cade Cunningham and <laughs> Jalen Duran? I'm faster than Zach Eady. I think I'll take John Moran and Zach Eady. No way. I mean, I, I don't it's going to be lights out. I think. I think that like it's it sucks for Ja because I think his window of being like a top five player is now passed. Like I think he had a shot to be up there. Okay. And now there's now Wimby's here. And Jaw is like his best case scenario is like six. Okay. Because he's already starting to get, I mean, he's not old, obviously, but he's getting older. Um, I do think, here's what I do think about the Grizzlies. And I think they could be a top 10 team, like you're saying. Could be very, I think there's a low chance, but it could be possible. And the main reason for that is not Jaw. Uh, it's technically not, it's sort of Zach Eady, but it's not really Zach Eady. Okay. I think that having Eady. Obviously, obviously, Zach Eady is not the same player as Steven Adams. But if we remember when the Grizzlies had Steven Adams, what player won Defensive Player of the Year that year? Steven, I mean, uh, sorry, Triple J, Jaron yeah, Jackson yeah, yeah. Jr. Having now that he doesn't have to play center anymore and he can roam more from the power forward when he gets back, I think he could. I mean, he's not going to, again, it's Wimby's league now, but I think he's going to be a very good defender again because he doesn't have to focus as much on rebounding because he's really bad at it. Last year, my man put up like 20 points a game or whatever because there was no jaw. Uh, yep. Desmond Bain was like, okay, but not quite as good as he was the year before. Desmond is a perfect third. Oh, yeah. Banana. Great, great third. Great. Yeah. Even even second option, like second scoring option, maybe not second best player. And but, that's what he gets to be again. Yeah. Um, and so like JJJ, I think is going to take, I think he took a big step forward last year on, on offense. So I think that's only going to help them. I just struggle with like the depth for them. Uh, I don't really like who do they have off the bench that's any good. I think like Marcus Smart. Look, I like mm, I don't even really like Marcus Smart anymore. You've what? always had a weird uh issue with him yeah, as like one I, of the best Oklahoma State basketball players of all time. I don't know. He he came back. He he came back for his sophomore year and he was like I got to prove to the NBA I can shoot threes now and just was like trash for a second. He was so good the first, if he had just left, he would be an all-time great Oklahoma State player, but unfortunately he came back the guy from Texas Tech called him the N-word, and then he decided I'm going to shoot a bunch of threes, and it didn't go well. Um, but yeah, so I don't know. I, I like I, I have a love hate relationship with Marcus Smart for sure. Um, and but and then like you also you know it's the same thing with injuries, right? Like, is Ja going to be back to his old self completely this year? Who knows? Is Marcus Smart going to get injured? Who knows? I don't know. I'm I'm hedging my bets on this team being good, and okay. part of it is like I want them to be good. So maybe I'm underrating them in the hopes that they will prove me wrong. I don't know. But uh, yeah, I don't know. I think you're a little high on the Grizzlies, but okay. what do I know? Okay, so what I number do, are we on? Sorry. I just think the ceiling is is there. Yeah, definitely. I think, it, it, yeah, if, if everything goes right, this team is definitely like Western Conference Finals potential. I don't think they're, I don't think they're championship potential. If it's Memphis versus Oklahoma City in the Western Conference Finals, I'm going to every game. I promise you that. Okay, that'd be fun. Um, <laughs> but uh what number are we on? Uh, nine's next. Okay, we are taking an unprecedented second commercial break. <laughs> so we will see you here in a second. So many ads. Okay, we are back from the ads. Dave is into his top nine. And I just want to point out, we have been remarkably close so far. Uh, he has nine teams left to go. Only of all the teams he's talked about so far, only two of them that I have on my list have not come up, which means that I have players in his top or teams in his top nine that are not in my top nine, only two of them. So we only differ. I mean, obviously we differ on placements, but for the most part, we've been pretty close to each other. Um, aside from maybe like the Grizzlies and the, uh, the Cavs, of course. And I think you underrated the, uh, the Pistons as most people are doing. <laughs> you had the nets a little higher than I did too. I have 30. Oh yeah. I you said I like 25, 24, 25. Don't be yeah, crazy. I don't think, I don't think so. Yeah, we'll see. Um, next, leading into the top 10, I've got the Pacers. Okay. Yeah. Pacers are one of the teams I I have lower than you, 13. Okay. I Yeah, I don't feel great about it, um, but they did, you know, go deep into the playoffs. And they're a very deep team. Um, mm-hmm. 
I like Halliburton. I like Siakam. Uh, they got Nimhard. They got Neesmith. Keep going. I get to the good player. Oh, Miles Turner. No, nope, keep get, going. Get to the good player. Matherin. Keep get to the good player. Come on. Toppin. No, we can do this. Come on, you got it. I think I've run out. No, no, no. There's one more. Everybody knows him. Former number one pick. Former number one pick. Yeah, you got it. Big boy. What? Big boy. Used to play they for. Don't, don't... Used to play for Golden State. Then he played for Detroit. You got it. James Wiseman. That's right, baby. He's not a number one pick. Oh, he wasn't. He's number. Is he two. number two? My That's bad, where my you. Bad. Th- I was like, and they have a number two pick. <laughs> Sorry, my bad. I forgot. Yeah, uh, this is his year. He's putting it together, baby. Is this? Is this uh, are we joking around? I mean, I love James Wiseman. I saw Torres Achilles, Torres saw Achilles last night. Oh, did he really? Crap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were doing a bit. I wasn't. I was really. I'm really. <laughs> I, every year, I'm hopeful it's going to be his year. I, I think he was. I don't know that it's been confirmed, but he definitely uh, slipped last night. Oh. Was carried out, and then I think that's, early MRI or the like, waiting on the MRI results. But dang, that's so gutting. I really thought finally we we're going <laughs> to unlock James. <Lewis. laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Oh man, I, can't I wanted the Thunder to go after him for so long while we were. He thinking. could be their next Hashim Thabit. Oh gosh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I love the Pacers. Um, not because of James Wiseman. That would have been nice, but yeah. Um yeah, I think they'll probably do just as good as they did last year. So they're gonna in Eastern Conference Finals. And maybe if the if Tibbs is overplaying the Knicks, then Oh, that's uh, a that's you that's you look mash that over. That's happening every single season. Maybe I'm just saying maybe they get hurt a little bit and hmm. uh Things bounce pay the Pacers way. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I I like. I mean, their bigs are good, right? I like Siakam. I like Turner quite a bit. Both guys. I mean, I think like Turner. Turner's like, it's funny. I feel like Turner seems really soft, but he's actually like a pretty good rim protector, right? Yeah. Like yeah. when you when I just think of Miles Miles Turner, I think like, oh, he's like the Pillsbury Doughboy. Like my man is, you know, the Lego guy. Yeah, he's so easy. It's so easy to get on, around him, but it's not. And then you know, obviously Halliburton is you know he's Halliburton he's great no denying that I think like obviously like last year I, I'm <laughs> yes they made the Eastern Conference Finals but he definitely took a step back in the second half of the season after he got that injury uh, so hopefully he's fully healthy I think he'll be even better um, but yeah I think and you know I hope uh, Benedict takes a step forward too because yeah he's pretty fun yeah he he's just a joy to play like watch play kind of like the Thompson twins like I don't know how he fits into like a Long-term winning. I just think role. those those kind of guys like the Thompsons, Mathern. I think like if they are if they can become perimeter wing defender like three and D guys. Yeah, I mean they're so athletic, right? Like right. If they do, if they just become that glue guy, I think it's like a per. I mean, it's like a perfect situation for him to do that with right. this team because they have their leading scorer, they have their second leading scorer, they have two big guys that both can play really well. I just think, and then they have like their bench guy, right? Like Nimhard is Nimhard might be Nimhard might start. I don't know, um, but McConnell I think he was on the starting draft or the starting depth chart when I looked it up. Okay, but, uh, yeah. And then Obi Toppin's there. He'll throw yep. down some big dunks every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, I don't know. I have them. I'm a little lower on you than yeah. on them than you. That's fair. Not by too much. I think it's mostly because I mean, obviously, it's because I like the Magic and the the Cavs, but also. Uh, a little bit more sold on the Kings than you are this year. So yeah. Like the beam. Yeah. Oh, I've yeah. got the bucks at eight. Okay. I have the bucks. That's the other t- team that hadn't been mentioned. I have bucks at 10 at 10. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, go ahead. I was just going to say, um, two of the, I don't even know what you want to call it at this point, but two very good all-star level players. Uh huh. Still playing at all star levels, but um, old, but older. Yeah, I, I guess like Giannis Lopez. is only like thirty. He's like twenty nine. He's not old. Yeah, yeah. Um, this seems old because he's been there for so long. I got a lot of for as tall as he is. He got a lot of miles. Yeah. Um. Still got Lopez. Still got Middleton. Um, See, I th- I think that Lopez. I think Lopez is in for like a little bit of a drop off. The old or just I think he's getting old. Yeah. Yeah. 
He's getting old. I think Middleton is obviously an injury risk. I mean, they have so many injury risks. That's a real problem for me yeah. for ranking this team. Is like everybody, you know, who's I'm looking at their roster right now. Like, is Tarian Prince their only guy on the, that's not like a big injury risk? Lillard, Giannis, uh, Bobby Portis, Brooke Lopez, all those guys are injury risks, right? So, yeah, yeah. But when they, when they're healthy, huge, massive ceiling, and yeah, and Doc is like relatively good at putting you know, all-star players together, right? He's kind of like, that's... that's he can't win at. in the playoffs, but yeah. I mean, he won once in the playoffs. Yeah, but he's blown like a <laughs> bunch of leads. Yes, yes, I know. Yeah. I'm aware Doc Rivers, not the greatest coach of all time. Yeah. Uh, although he's he's pretty good, not a bad coach. I believe in the Bucks, but yeah, I mean, they're one injury. Oh, all it takes is one. It's not yeah. like they can keep going after one. And they're yeah. What are you going to do? Is Pat Connington going to come off and be like your number yeah. one score? I don't think so. It's going to be tough, but I, in the uh, case of everyone staying healthy, I like them. Okay. I like them a lot. Fair enough. Um. Next I have the wolves. Okay. Ooh, okay. What number is this? Seven. Oh, okay. Where I mean, do you have not, them? It's not that bad, but. This is where I was. I, I said before, I was like, I think we'll have the same number top two. I don't know if we'll have the same top five because the Minnesota okay. Timberwolves, I have them at number three. Wow. Okay. Um, yeah, I think I want to believe that Cat being gone will free up some Anthony Edwards and make them a lot better. And they needed depth. In or you know guard depth and Divincenzo, I think will be important. Yeah, I think Divo will be huge. I just don't think that they have the firepower to compete with the top level teams, the mm-hmm. Mavericks specifically, the Thunder specifically. Um, I think the Nuggets, like. I get that Gobert is a DPOY level player. Mm-hmm. I think without someone, and I, I, you know, Nas Reed can. Yeah, don't you dare disrespect Nas Reed. Do some of what Cat does. But I think Jokic becomes a problem for them again without Cat there. Okay. Um, you say so. And yeah, I just. I mean, jo- I, Jokic is a problem for everybody, so. I think the the cat trade raised the floor of the wolves. Yeah. But raised the ceiling of the Knicks. Yeah, that, I mean that's literally what I, Minnesota's ceiling took a takes a hit without cat, but I think the floor is higher. Yeah. So I and said the so, exact same thing. I think they probably make it second round, if not conference finals. Um but I don't if I had to bet, I would bet Mavericks, Thunder, and Nuggets all to be better than the Wolves. I have so I think Ant is going to take a leap and potentially be MVP candidate this year. Yep. Um, I still don't know if that makes this is weird to say. I don't know if that makes him a top five player in the league though, uh, because I mean it'll be interesting to see like what he. Yeah. I don't know. It's just like you know I don't know like they have to get better at fourth quarter scoring, right? Like clutch scoring, they have to get better, have to get more efficient. Um, I think that Devo helps that so much, right? Like you know. Cat helps to some degree in your closing lineup, right? Because he can stretch the floor, um, but he can't really create. And also, I think we maybe have talked about, I think we talked about this last episode where like Cat is one of those guys who takes so much time for decision making and is not willing to like shoot corner threes because he, I mean, he is, he does it, but he doesn't do it at like a high rate because Mm -hmm. he like thinks he's a playmaker. And Randall has those same issues. But if they have, if they can put a lineup out there that's like Conley, uh, Anthony Edwards, um, Oh, what's his name? Crap. Uh, the the defender. What's his name? What's their Nas defender Reed? guy's name? No, not Nas Reed. Uh, Alexander Walker. Nikhil. Oh, okay. Um, and then like Nas Reed and um, I don't know. I don't even know where I'm going with this, but I think like they, I think they can, they can have a better closing lineup now than they did before. Again, I am, I've said this on this podcast before. I think that Cat is overrated like big time. I don't think yeah. he's that good. Um, yeah. He's also been injured a lot in the past and they have looked just fine without him. Um, so I don't know why that changes now when they, I mean, yes, Randall is also injury prone, but Devo is like a great player to have off your bench. Like maybe one of the, I mean, he, 
I don't know. I don't know if he's like a six man of the year candidate or not, but he could be up there for sure. Could flirt with it this year. Um, I think Nas Reed is going to be, you know, depends on how many, how many minutes he, I mean, I know, like they've said in the preseason, they're going to hold Conley to like 20 minutes a game uh, to like try to save him more for the playoffs. So I think Nas Reed is going to have to pick up a lot of those minutes that cat loses. And, and on top of that, I think they can do that now when they couldn't have done that in the past as well, because when uh, Mike Conley goes out or when um, Anthony Edwards goes out, now they have a guy who can create from the power forward position. Like Randall is a good creator. Unlike cat cat has some like plays, but I think not, yeah. I think Randall in, puts in some really interesting lineup combinations that are going to make them make it more, make it easier for them to like rest their guys more and make them even more dangerous in the playoffs. So I think that they are a contender to make the Eastern Western conference finals. Once again, I don't think they have championship upside. Uh, in fact, I would say like a couple of teams I have ranked below them probably have more championship upside. I just am a believer that like the Timberwolves are going to make it far in the playoffs almost no matter what. Whereas other teams like, you know, stuff could break the wrong way and it just won't happen. Yeah. I, I totally agree on the depth that they have. I agree on Ant. My one pushback would be Randall and I have not yeah. watched a ton of Knicks basketball in the uh-huh. last couple of years. So take that with a grain of salt. I just think when I do watch Randall, uh, and I actually like the idea of staggering them a lot. I think that yeah. that would help a ton, but he just operates at a pace that's a lot slower yes. than what Anthony Edwards operates at. Yeah. And I just, him combined with Gobert, I just think is going to clog so much of the floor yeah. and that like ant needs it spread wide open to right. be the most yeah. effective. And so I want him to take another step. I think he's capable of it. I just don't, I think it would have happened more. I think it would have been more likely to happen for him to open up and take another step with cat than it would be for Randall with Randall, but maybe, but I also think like the other thing to think about, and this is not so much this season, but that gives them a lot more versatility moving forward where they don't have to like bring in Randall for a big contract. Oh right? yeah. So I think like, Again, you know, we're not looking forward to the next season, but I think it's a move. We're, now we're just arguing about the trade, not arguing, but I just, I think it's a good trade for the Timberwolves almost no matter what. Like, I don't think if that, I'm, if I'm running a franchise on 2K, yeah. Well, first of all, I'm trading Go Bear for like parts, but I'm trading Cat and getting off that contract. And yeah. I, I think it, they'll be better set up for the future. Yeah. But I do think they're, they just leaves them a little, uh, clogged this year i, I can see it i don't love it i think you're wrong but i can see it uh next up i've got the 76ers okay um, who i i yeah. did write this before uh joel Embiid said he wasn't going to play back to backs at all this year mm-hmm. so that worries me a little bit and what does that I, worry you what why does that worry you um it's i don't know i don't i guess i don't know how many back-to-backs there are but the less Joel L. Embiid plays, the less I like the team. I mean, yeah, but he's... well, okay. the The point there is that the Seventy Sixers are making the playoffs pretty much no matter what. So if he can rest more, sure, and make it to the playoffs healthy, he hasn't really had a healthy playoffs in his that's, career. Yeah, that's right? fair. Yeah, that's fair. Um, sorry, I just mean like the less games he plays, the worse I feel about the team in general. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, I they mean, probably they probably don't need him to be out there. Well, they don't need him at all because they have the drum god now, so it's it's over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> totally. Um, but yeah, I love. I think they've got one of the best fitting like big threes mm-hmm. of every like yes. Where you tell me like the Suns have a big three that can score a lot. Great. I don't. They're all kind of like just passing the ball to each other. Yeah. Whereas these three, I feel like, have an offense like tailor made to like their games work so well together. Uh-huh. Um, I really think the only reason I don't have them ranked higher is just like where the 76ers have fallen in the last couple of years. Like they had hard, like yeah. I'm not that Harden and PG are the same player, but like we saw what happened with Maxi Harden and Embiid. Yeah. And they, they didn't make it that far. Um, I, th- I mean, yeah. I mean, I would. Paul George is a way better player than James Harden. 
That's, oh, sorry, a uh, team player. I don't know about like one on one. Maybe, maybe I didn't mean to compare. I didn't mean yeah. to compare them specifically, but um, I do. I like it, if someone said they're my pick for like title favorite. Oh, that's not Celtics. I wouldn't be mad about it. Yeah, I have them at four. Yeah, uh, like you said, I really like their big three. Um, I think that they have. I mean, again, you know, we're, we are counting on some injury prone players to stay healthy with that ranking. Like we're hoping they're healthy in the playoffs. Yeah, but I do like. I, I like. You know, he's old, but I still like Kyle Lowry, uh, Caleb Martin, good good uh, depth piece, Kelly Oubre Jr. I like Kelly Oubre Jr. Of course, the best rebounder to ever live, Andre right. Drummond is here. Doesn't even cheat when he is trying to get rebounding statistics, but you know, whatever. Who cares? It doesn't matter. The drum god does what he wants. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty high on the 76ers. I had them all the way up at three when I very first like just made like my first glance. They dropped down to four because I kind of like fell in love with the Timberwolves a little bit more again. Yeah. Um but I, def- I think that I I do think that the 76ers have more championship potential than the Timberwolves. In fact, I would argue they might have the second most championship potential if everyone is healthy. So maybe I should put them at two, but I have them at four. Fair enough. Uh, next, number five spot. And really, if you wanted to switch this team with the Wolves, as far as Western Conference contenders go, okay. that's fine. I, the Wolves proved it last year. So, um, oh. However, what this team added in the offseason mm-hmm. – is a player who is not the most valuable player in the league or most important player or in the league or the best player in the league, but someone who has consistently made almost everyone that he's played with a lot better and yes. gotten them to the best version of themselves. Yeah, I know who you're talking about. Even though people say, even though people love to uh, start a bunch of narratives about him, um, Russell yeah. Westbrook. Oh, I thought you were talking about Sarich, my bad. And the Denver Nuggets, I have at five. Um, we okay. Go ahead. I think it was a little bit of a fluke that they were beat last year. Um, okay, interesting. I think that I obviously you can't say they're the better team when they lost, but I think that you know, there's just certain like all those games were close. Again, I don't think Russell Westbrook like really moves the needle. I'm I'm kind of just kidding about that because I think he, I think he does a little bit though because. Like if Murray has off nights or if Murray's not playing, Westbrook can like get in there and he's not going to score like the sim- in a similar way as Murray, but right. I think he can like hold the fort a little bit for Murray. And I yes. think that's my biggest concern with this team is like Murray kind of took a little step back last year. Yeah. And if he's not going to be, you know, back up to his 2022, is that when they won a title or 23? 20, 23 when they won the title, he's not going to be at that level. You know, then they, you know, that's like my biggest concern with this team is like, I mean, obviously there's the depth piece, right? Like they lost Brown and then they lost KCP in back to back years. So who knows there? But I don't know. I think I just think the the biggest issue with the team is like when Jokic and Murray aren't out there, mm-hmm. it, they they have a very tough time creating offense. Yeah. And there's I don't want to say nobody better. Yeah. But like Russell Westbrook is amazing at creating his own offense. It's not very efficient. It's not always the prettiest. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I, and I mean, then ex- Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, I'm excited to see what him and Jokic can do oh, that'd on be the fun, yeah. together. Yeah. They're just such amazing playmakers that you're putting together. Mm-hmm. Um, the problem is what you need is like the older Westbrook to be a, a mentor. Like it's kind of yeah. hard to be like a 29 year old mentor to a 35 year old that, yeah, is set in his ways and insane person, but yeah. we'll see. I, mean, I think I think it could be magical. I mean, if nothing else, Westbrook is an upgrade on Reggie Jackson, right? So there's that to be said. They are like, I think my top league pass team. I, I just mm. I want to watch. Okay, I think any killing can happen on any given night. Yeah, I mean, I will here. You know, I've said a couple of times, Steph Curry is a top ten player all time. I think there are only three of those currently playing in the NBA. And uh, so I I will never bet against Jokic because I think Jokic is uh, probably a top ten player all time. Okay, at well, least I, top fifteen, at least top fifteen. He probably wouldn't have been in my top fifteen, but again, wow, we'll have to do another Joker. Another the Joker that. is he's so good, he's so good. Uh, next, I've got a team that I'm sure you won't have decide the Knicks. Yeah, I have them at eight. Okay, it's not yeah. that much lower. Um, I think that 
adding cat I, again i said it earlier i think it raised the ceiling um Yeah. i don't see how i, I really think it's replacing Randall with Cat and maybe the DiVincenzo thing is going to have more of an effect than I'm giving it credit but I think replacing Randall with Cat is just such a big impact I think it makes Brunson better I think it I I think they'll the way that he is best operating in that drive and kick is going to be like truly phenomenal and Mm I hmm. think it gives their playbook uh just a new page and i i don't know i love everything about it Do you want to know what uh Tom Thibodeau's Minnesota Timberwolves teams rated ranked when in defensive efficiency, defensive rating when uh Carl Anthony Towns was the anchor of that defense, the 5 position? not really 28, but yeah let's 27th, 27th. he's gonna be the four though correct Who's going to be the five? Who's going to play the five? Please tell me because Mitchell Robinson's out and he hates the Oh, team Mitchell now. Robinson's out. He's been, that's the whole reason they made this trade is because they didn't have Hartenstein and they needed a five because Mitchell Robinson's out and precious. Well, The is out already. I don't know enough about the Knicks, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Mitchell Robinson was playing. no, he's not. He's hurt. Dang. And he has been posting on Instagram about how mad he is about the trade. So. Is he just boys with Randall or Dave I think Vincenzo? he's just mad because he doesn't want, like, he lost his spot at the five now. Oh, gotcha. I see. Um, you know, I didn't know all that, but I don't know. I like it. I I don't see adding, to me, adding Yeah. together Brunson and Cat is like a hugely potent offensive scheme. And then on top of that, you add Bridges. And it's just like, they were already... It, I don't want to compare it to what the Thunder did, but Mm -hmm. like they already had a deep a, a team that was built for deep playoff run, and then they went and added like two better players than what they had. So, I don't think I don't know if that's true though because what was what do you know what the reason that the king or the, the kings the knicks turned around last year and had an incredible end of their season was because their defense became so good when they added OG once OG was injured defense kind of fell off a little bit now they have a guy who is their defensive anchor Who cannot play defense and they still have to deal with Brunson on like this this team is going to be trash on defense until at least until Mitchell Robinson comes back if he ever even comes back and on top of that the team is has is filled with injury prone stars cat injury prone OG injury prone Brunson probably not injury prone but smaller point guards as they age traditionally Yeah. start getting a lot of injuries Is cat injury prone? yes what are you talking about And didn't he have like one season where he was super injured and then... Okay, don't make me pull basketball reference up in the middle of this. Sorry, you don't have to, but I would Do just push it. back a little bit on him being injury prone. He played all year last year. No, he did not. Sorry, he played through the final or through the playoffs Okay, sure. very healthy. Uh, last year, he played 62 games. The year before that, 29, 74, 50, 35. He's had one season where he would have qualified for end of the year awards since 20... Oh, wait, 2019, 2020 might have been. They didn't get how many games did they play that year. That one might have been a COVID thing. Twenty nine. Oh, that doesn't matter. But yeah, he Twenty. is. I didn't know about the twenty nine. Yeah, he has been injury prone since he turned 24 years old. When did the Pat Bev thing happen? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Have you ever seen the? Uh, for all interested. Uh, Google the Nick Wright rant about Patrick Beverly jumping on the table Okay. because af like basically after he did that and said like we're going to be a problem for the next five years Oh, yeah. I think they bounced the Warriors and he said like this is my league now not Steph Oh, God. Okay. and Nick Wright just breaks down everything that's happened to Pat Bev and all the horrible teams he's played for <laughs> since that year That's great. I love Pat Bev. um, so Killing yeah it in Israel. Killing it. My man is killing it in Israel. I, I I don't I think like you, the you ceiling probably can't of the say Knicks. that. This podcast probably got in trouble now. Let's move on to number three. I've got the Mavericks. Oh man. Okay. I have the Mavericks at seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. I think, you know, it was 
difficult to have them beat the Thunder as like amazingly as they did. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I thought it was a great reminder that basketball is a sport where one player makes a huge difference. True. And they have the player. He is so good. And if Clay Thompson can even be a shell of his former self, which to be fair, he might not be able to be. I, like I, don't, even think he, 10%. I don't think so. But if he can, then and they have Kyrie and Clay catching and shooting from a Luca offense, mm-hmm. I I I think they can be better than they were last year. It's definitely possible. I just I don't know. I don't I don't love how the team is constructed. Uh like if they if, if I I would almost like it more if they didn't have Clay Thompson or didn't have Kyrie Irving and just had like an actual like a, a wing defender, right? Cuz mm-hmm. like who's going to, you know, in this scenario, right? If their closing lineup is like those 3 plus I don't know either PJ Washington, Daniel Gafford or Derek Lively between those yeah. three guys, right? Yeah. Like who is guarding Ant? Who is guarding SGA? Yeah. Who is guarding Jamal Murray? Like who, I mean, yes, they're going to score big time, right? Like they're going to, they're sealing us through the roof. This team also probably has championship potential just because Luca is that guy. But I don't know. They don't, they don't really scare. Like if I was a Western conference contender, I wouldn't be super scared of the Mavericks across a seven game series, which is probably crazy to say. I would be scared of Luca, but like the rest of the team, unless Derek Lively takes like a massive step forward as an offensive threat. I mean, obviously I have them in the top seven, so I don't think they're bad or anything, but yeah. I think like relying on 34 year old injury prone, Clay Thompson to play your, yeah. to be your perimeter defender and three and D guy is probably not like a recipe for success. That the, the clay injury history is tough, but when he is in the three and D role, he performs very valiantly. Has he, but he's a two and D. They what always have. Like they always had, oh, sorry, I'm, I'm so stupid. I was thinking like the position. I don't know why. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, sorry, I don't know what I don't know why. It's I said like that. I think Clay's pretty good at threes. Yeah, no, he. Yeah, you you are correct. I was thinking position. Yeah, because they've always had like you know like a uh, an Andre Iguodala, a Harrison Barnes, a yeah. uh, Andrew Wiggins. They've always had like that defensive stopper, and I don't like maybe they could trade for it, right? Like. I'm trying to look here. I mean, Quentin Grimes, like is Quentin Grimes that guy? Is Dante Exum that guy? I don't know. That's Najee right. Marshall. I don't know. I just don't see. I don't see how you have those three guys on the the court at the end of a game, and you need to stop, right? Like yeah. maybe they can sub out one of the one of them. I don't know. And uh, I will say, I'm probably a little biased. I sat in a lot of the games where they were playing the Thunder in the playoffs, mm-hmm. and they. It was just Luca was so unbeatable. Oh, he's so good. Yeah, it's it's incredible. And it just was like, I don't know how anyone stops them. But I don't unless... think the Thunder lost that game because of Luke that series because of Luca. I think they lost that series because they don't have any re- bigs that can rebound. They kind of sold out to stop Luca. Yeah, and everyone was just hitting everything. I mean, yeah, yeah. But they they have a lot of guys that they can. Like kick to when yeah. Luca's being double teamed, and now and then they added Clay Thompson. So, yeah, I don't know. I like I'm it. not convinced, but I mean, I still I'm pretty high on them, but not as high as you for yeah. sure. Um, number two, uh, the team that the Mavericks beat last year. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, I have the Thunder. Yes, I, I, I don't know anyone that doesn't have the Thunder at number two. Well, I have the Thunder at number two. Okay. It seems like everyone and their dog, uh, yeah. it's all they can talk about is how the Thunder are now number two, um, which is funny that they have like, you know, amazing, the first amazing trade and then amazing draft after amazing draft followed by amazing free agent signings. And they still can't be as good as the number one team because the number <laughs> one team is so damn good. I mean, that, that um, team is put together. I mean, like the, the trades that team made and the draft picks they made are like yeah. basically perfect too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I actually don't quote me on this. I'm quoting you. But I do think the like top eight of the Thunder might be better than any team in the league. Oh my. Okay. I don't know if their starting five is the best. Yeah. But 
I just think adding heart, uh, adding I heart and adding Caruso. Oh, don't forget gives about the draft pick. Okay. The draft pick. Yeah. It's like one of my favorite players in the draft was topic. Oh, sorry. I thought uh, you meant like adding another draft pick or something. Oh, they don't need more of those, please. Yeah. Dear God, get rid of some of I, those. I, I would. I wish they'd trade them for Kevin Durant or something. But, <laughs> um. So I don't know much about Topic. Tell me what I need. Oh, to know. I just like him because he's a six eight point guard. Oh, okay. The next just like a, just like Giddy, you know, and Cade. <laughs> yeah, we can't get enough of those. And Penny Hardaway, all my favorite players. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think iHeart is going to be so beneficial in series against, you know, Jokic. I think it's going to be great. I think they've got do, go ahead. so many different, like, lineup combinations that are just make them so ready to take on the Mavericks in a rematch yeah. or the Wolves in a in a match. Um, yeah, because I mean, because, like, where the, the Mavericks don't have any defenders, right? Like... Clay Thompson, hello to the torture chamber, right? Like, yeah, and he's if, locked down, and, and Caruso can lock a guy down. Caruso, like Jalen Williams, is a very yeah. good defender. Mm-hmm. Shea is slept on as a defender. Like his statistics yeah. are wild when you go yeah. look at his like advanced defensive statistics. Yeah, um, yeah, I think, I think the only like the only potential issue, which is not so much a on the court issue as it is a contract issue is I do think they maybe, and I think they had to bring him in. I think it's a very good pickup in the long, like in the short term and potentially the long term too. Cause it doesn't like Thunder have so many draft picks. It doesn't really matter yeah. to some degree, but bringing in a guy for, I don't remember what they paid. I heart, but a guy who's not going to be in your, clo- like he, he can't be in their closing lineup, right? Like the Chet <clears throat> has to be the five when they're closing teams out because I heart doesn't add any spacing. Yeah. So I think like you're bringing in a guy for that much money who is not going to be playing the last two or three minutes of a game is kind of crazy, but I think it depends who you're playing, but yeah, I agree with you. Yeah. I think there are certain teams, the Timberwolves being an example where you play them together, probably yeah. down the stretch. And I mean, and also like the other issue with iHeart. look, I like iHeart a lot. Don't get me wrong, but if Chet is playing the four now, well, you just robbed yourself of like one of the best rim protectors in the league because yeah. he has to go follow around a four. Right. So yeah, there is some there is some like concern there with iHeart being like as much as I love it a lot for like the rebounding and the toughness and being able to match up with like someone like Joe Jokic and like let Chet hide a little bit in those kind of situations because he's such a small little frail man. Um I can see some issues potentially with you know, you're kind of losing some of the stuff that makes Chet Chet. In some respects, you kind of like overpaying for a guy that you probably can't play at the end of games. Yeah, I don't know. There's some, there's some, there's, there's, a, there's definitely enough there that knocked them down from the one spot for sure. Besides I just think, the other team being like godly. <laughs> I think that it's a fair argument to say like they went out and overpaid for a guy that they, you know, most likely won't use for more than 30 minutes a game. Mm-hmm. Like definitely won't be closing the game most of the time. The only argument I would make against it is there weren't really any holes. Yes. Yeah. Other than the rebounding. Yeah. And, you know, like Chet operating against the biggest of the big. Yeah. And they solved it. Like, yeah, yes. they yeah. they paid a lot of money to do it, but they had the money to spend and they mm-hmm. solved the one problem they have. So, yeah, I agree. It's like. I'm nitpicking for sure. For sure. Yeah. Uh, number one is the Boston Celtics. I don't see how anyone beats them in if unless like someone gets injured. Uh-huh. Even uh, if even the, if they get injured, who cares? Like Yeah, I think the Thunder have the best chance to match up with them in the finals. Mm, like that's and, interesting. and actually win. Like I think what happened with the Mavericks happens to everyone. Yeah. If, if they go against them. Um maybe I, you could make a case that like Jokic has some sort of weird Celtics beating, you know. Like they can't throw anybody at him, so he kind of breaks their defense a little bit. But mm-hmm. I just I don't see maybe the Lakers if they can stay healthy and maybe I, I mean I think all season, but I, I guess it's not it's not in the finals. But like Philly could beat them. Okay, if Sorry. Philly's healthy, yeah, I, think I was Philly I was thinking finals, but yeah, yeah. I mean, it, even if you want to say Philly has a chance, it's still like it'd be tough. 
the Celtics are so much deeper. You know, I know yeah. we love Drummond on this podcast, but one uh, of us does. <laughs> Horford, he is not. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, I, I think they are without a doubt number one. I don't even think it's close. No, I mean it's it's really hard to like bet against a team that just won a title in like pretty convincing fashion. Oh yeah, returns... the, the most convincing fashion we've seen in a long time. Yeah, and returns ten of their top ten minute players. <laughs> yes, like no one they didn't lose a guy. Like you know when the Nuggets lost Bruce Brown, people were like, oh that could be a problem. Turns out it was, and but they didn't lose anybody. Peyton Pritchard still in the building, baby. <laughs> Not everything about it, I love, and you know. If they can stay healthy all year, like like Porzingis wasn't healthy all year, he's already hurt. And he's one. So. Of, he he can't. Well, isn't that from last year? Uh, I think so, but yeah, and I, I think that might actually be like better for them. Like they don't need Porzingis to play the whole season, right? Like yeah, just get, wait until January. Yeah, I mean, why? What's what's the point? Yeah, so no, that's a good point. But yeah, yeah. I don't think anyone's beating them. I don't. I yeah, I didn't see it happening last year, and then they absolutely demolished everyone. And so I definitely don't see it happening this year either. I mean, I think like, like, yes, the Knicks uh, ceiling probably got higher, but I still think this team crushes the Knicks. Yeah. The floor th- of the Celtics was already so much higher than yeah. the Knicks I, ceiling. So I, even if, Ev, even if Evan Mobley becomes like a, you know, a 20 points a night scorer somehow, and it's like all NBA level, they crush the Cavs. The magic, yep. the magic maybe could be interesting if Isaac is like really good, just because he can go out and guard the perimeter, and then Paolo is like you know he's he's Paolo you know like that could that could possible, but I really think the 76ers are like the only team in the East that have a legitimate shot, and even that is relying on like injured, aging superstars staying uninjured yeah. guys that don't ever make it deep in the playoffs. Yes, correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, it's let- the Celtics. It's the Celtics, baby. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and get out of here. We will be back to our regular scheduled stuff in two weeks. Uh, But before we have to run ads one more time, we are going to go ahead and leave. See you later. Goodbye.